Good afternoon. Welcome to the show. I'm Jim Flyzik, and uh, as mentioned, we will discuss best practices with data center consolidation strategies in the federal government. With me today on the show are Zach Goldstein, the Chief Information Officer at NOAA, Frank Konechny, the Chief Technology Officer at U.S. Air Force, Tony McMahon, the Deputy Director for Enterprise Computer Center at the IRS, Chris Steele, the Chief Solution Architect at Software AG Government Solutions, Scott Gray, the Vice President, IT and Security Solutions at Lockheed Martin, and Carl Carl Schwab, the Chief Solutions Architect at NetScout. We're going to talk data center consolidation. Been around for a few years. I know there's been a lot of progress. I know there's been a lot going on in this space. So let's get some updates. Let's start with NOAA, where, uh, with Zach Goldstein. Uh, when I think of NOAA, I think of those humongous amounts of data that uh, flow with no satellites. Tell us how you're uh, managing that with the data center consolidations. Maybe some examples of what you're doing, Zach. Sure. Uh, thanks. Well, we have a lot of data. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean we have a lot of data centers, because there's a lot of data flowing through a very few number of data yeah, centers. Yeah, I heard computers can handle a lot of data yeah, these right, days. Yeah, right, right. That's, 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 that's a whole big data issue, which is a different program. Yeah. Um, but, but we have over 200 data centers uh, wow. across the United States, because NOAA is in every congressional district. There are weather forecast offices, river forecast offices, uh, National Ocean Center, uh, National Fish Marine Fisheries Centers, satellite data. Uh, download, downlinks, and data centers. Um, but we've made some great progress. Okay. Since uh, fiscal year 2011, we've closed 41 data centers. Uh, and according to the OMB model, and I have to say this carefully because how we count these things is, is, is an art, sure. not a science. But according to the OMB model, we've saved, we've avoided, not saved, avoided uh, future costs of mm -hmm. $145 million. Wow. Um, whether the, that's precisely the right number, uh, not sure, but it's clearly the right order of magnitude. Um, we did that through increased energy efficiency, um, at, and we got energy efficiency at the same mm -hmm. time. And the savings were through reduced um, energy costs and uh, reduced uh, real estate costs. Um, some other things we've done are more structural. Uh, we put in place a policy of, uh, I refer to it as uh, put down the shovel. You know, when you're digging yourself in a hole, right. the first thing you do is put the shovel down. So we have this rule that says no new data centers unless you have some compelling reason. And that itself, as we've had to refurbish facilities, build new facilities to replace old facilities, well, the new facility doesn't get a data center, and that drives consolidation as a natural byproduct sure. of the modernization sure, process. Idea. We, um, we appointed a data center program manager to uh, coordinate this effort. That's, uh, that's actually a position that's being filled as we speak. Um, and and we've established some rules that that uh, program manager will be enforcing. Um, a, a basic rubric that says um, if, it's, if the function being supported by the data uh, is a primary mission essential function, in other words, uh, American lives are at risk mm -hmm. if we don't get it right, uh, that's going into a private cloud. And what we mean by that is a single tenant. doesn't sure. mean that it has to be run by the government, but it's, sure. just, just, it's just us there. Um, the other functions uh, could be a, a community cloud for low or non-mission uh, mm -hmm. essential functions. Mm -hmm. um, or we might put something in the private cloud if the economics say so. Right. Um, right. And, and the biggest, the biggest accomplishment... we cloud, too, coming up. So Okay, well, more on that later. Um, the biggest accomplishment, though, I think, is that we've made major strides in changing the culture that... Um, causes users to want to keep their infrastructure close to them. So not everybody, not all users get it, right. but, um, but the leaders are, are getting it and they're, they're finding themselves able to let go. Okay, 126 shows. The word cultures have been now mentioned in all 126. Frank, um, how about over at the Air Force? What do you, what kind of uh, example of progress can you uh, cite here? Well, initially, you know, we started with FDCCI and we identified, you know, hundreds of data centers. And then we realized based on the OMB definition that we probably weren't quite right. And so what happens was is we had to do an application inventory first. We decided that was the best way because we have 128 bases and half of them have the same applications and some of them don't. That's a great idea anyway. I mean, find all the redundant applications you out there. Why move right. them? Right. That's the, and that was the intent. We, as we're going through this, we actually found one base had 55 data centers by the OMB definition. So consolidation-wise is as we pushed uh, our applications to... Uh, core data centers, as well as trying to minimize them at the, uh, the base level. We're working through that like every, every day, really, because we have uh, an inventory going on. We're going to put automated tools in, in the field to actually maintain that inventory. Mm -hmm. We have to do some uh, uh, actual interviews to actually determine some of the applications that are out there, because you just don't know. Sure. 
And so we're progressing. I mean, in fact, we've gone through 20 bases roughly now of inventory. We're getting a pretty good idea now of the snapshot of what's actually there and what's duplicative. Mm -hmm. And so we're progressing down to determining now the final disposition of those applications. Great. I'm looking forward to talking more about that um, as uh, the show moves on here. Chris Steele, t tell us a little bit about Software AG and uh, the role you play in supporting data center consolidation and the kind of things you're doing to, to support this program moving forward. Sure. Uh, to build on a lot of what uh, Frank said, we do, we, we see a lot of progress made across these different agencies. And during the process, we see them adopting a lot of new best practices. So they're, they're taking a lot of lessons learned from the cloud um, and from other areas like DevOps, et cetera, and they're incorporating it in. Where we try to fit in is uh, in the uh, storing, uh, taking inventory of not just the, the hardware, but also the applications and really building those dependencies back to the mission. So how do all these things flow down? What are our different priorities? What makes sense to move now? Mm -hmm. Those type of things. So we, we have different products that do that, and um, we see a lot of active interest these days. Cool. Uh, Carl Schaub, the uh, NetScout. Tell me a little bit about how NetScout plays in this space and the kind of things you're doing and the kind of progress you're seeing and, you know, success stories you're seeing coming up. Yeah, I guess tying in with what Frank was saying, you know, what Nescot brings to the table is visibility, right? So we're, we're able to show you before data center uh, consolidation happens, what applications are being hosted, what who's connecting to them, which is part of what's always been left out when you start to migrate apps is where your users are. Does it make sense to move into a specific data center or or um, what the our interdependencies are of the apps as they're mm -hmm. hosted, right? So right. that's so we do that prior to. We can do that after uh, consolidation has happened. And then we create all these baselines that actually pinpoint where the problem is, at what tier of the application is giving you the issues. So. Interesting. Hear more about that, too. Uh, Tony McMahon, um, I <clears throat> know a little about the IRS from my history at Treasury and, and things, and I know that the uh, IRS has some great stories with consolidation, some, some, uh, and I understand you've been in the middle of most of them. Give us some ideas here, some of the progress that uh, has happened over there at the IRS. Okay. Uh, as Frank mentioned, uh, our initiative really started with the FDCCI. Uh, of course, we have a lot of computer room space, but we had to baseline it. So we baselined ours using 17 sites. We had three computing, we had three computing centers, uh, 10 campuses, and we had three locations here in uh, Martinsburg, I mean, here in the uh, Washington, D.C. area. Uh, so when we baselined it, we had 392,000 square feet that we were targeting, and we needed to reduce that by 50% over a five-year span, mm -hmm. which ends tomorrow. So that program, we established a program office, uh, and that program office uh, was leading this it, it not entire effort. So uh, the numbers I got yesterday were that we are going to be released, we've released over 200,000 square feet to be repurposed uh, of computer room space, and that's going to be, that meets our goal. Uh, about 5,000 square feet over. <laughs> so we did meet that. Well, congratulations. The, I love it when a plan comes together and actually uh, is met. Probably the biggest part of that is during, at, even after the uh, FDCCI was started, uh, our commissioner made a decision to uh, go from three computing centers to two. Uh, so we have, I was actually leading the effort where we actually shut down the uh, Detroit right. Computing Center, where we moved, uh, that was over 50,000 square feet right. that we re repurposed, and we completed that in April of this year. Yeah. So that was really huge. Yeah. For those of us who have been working in this space in the past, you know how easy it is to shut down a large computer center in a, in a district. Uh, Scott Gray over at Lockheed Martin, tell us uh, how you're working in with this data center consolidation world and supporting your customer base and some of the progress you see going on. Certainly. You know, as, as the largest provider of IT services to the federal government, we have great relationships across agencies, mm -hmm. all that are represented here with NOAA and cer certainly the Air Force and the IRS. Uh, I thought I might speak to some of the others since uh, we have the panelists here. Uh, yeah, Department of Justice is one that we're seeing some really good progress, specifically ATF mm -hmm. uh, under uh, Dr. Uh, Rick Holgate, which I think has been on the program before. And, he has. And now Roger Beasley. He has. Yeah, they, they've done some major consolidations. DHS is another one. Mm -hmm. uh, and specifically, if we look at T TSA mm -hmm. uh, under Steve, I think they were the first component within DHS to, to move into DHS's data center number two. Uh, but, you know, as we kind of look at a broader perspective, you know, tracking progress is very, very important. Uh, you have to have a detailed plan. It has to be specific or else you can't really track that progress. 
we know that firsthand because we, like any large you know, organization, has had to go through this as well. And we have consolidated 90% of our data center operations. So it's large, it's complex, it's complicated, and you have to plan it. Uh, if you look to some of the re recent reports out of GAO, um, they, they just completed a study of 26 agencies. And through that, they identified over the course of a four-year period that $3.6 worth of savings has been realized through these efforts. Wow. That's, that's a, something to hang a hat on there, you know, to uh, show some success. Um, Tony McMahon, uh, how about um, we talked a little bit already about cloud and uh, managed services, and as you're looking at data center consolidation, how do you look at those two issues, too, and how they interrelate? As, to be honest with you, Tom and I, uh, as we put together our program for the year, you know, we had data center consolidation, then we have cloud, and we have virtualization, whatever, and sometimes I, I see them sort of like bleeding together in terms of the, the actual programs. So how do you differentiate cloud and managed services from the pure data center consolidation, or, or is it just part of the strategy? It's part of the strategy. Uh, we actually uh, have a private cloud managed service now for all of our storage. Uh, we've migrated all of our storage to uh, a managed service where we only pay for what we use, mm -hmm. and that's in-house. Uh, and that actually helped with the consolidation because we can move data. And now that we're down to two computing centers, replicating that data across the centers for mm -hmm. all the uh, redundancy and everything. We are also looking at the cloud services for our email uh, infrastructure. Uh, we have uh, we had three sites where we maintain for, for redundancy purposes, but we are now looking at moving that uh, as probably one of our Bit first major applications to the cloud mm -hmm. as a, outside of IRS. Yeah, terrific. Mm -hmm. The uh, Frank, how about over at Air Force? How do you factor in your what what's cloud? What's a managed service? What's data center consolidation? And sort those issues out. It's, it's significant across the board. Uh, for instance, you know we, we the panelists talk about you know consolidation. We have to consolidate at a base level besides at a core data center level. So when we talk about data centers, we're talking about 127 data centers at each of the bases, plus core data centers, plus commercial data centers. We want to be able to move our applications in a virtualized environment anywhere, any of those three particular environments. In fact, we're going to have some applications that are going to be in all three environments, just because of where they are, what the customer actually needs to get access to, and the, the availability of the application. You know, we, we use cloud now for a lot, a lot of DevOps, because it doesn't have to be, as long as you're not using DUD data, it's very easy to use a cloud environment for DevOps. We also have gone on a path of large data object uh, storage, where we want to be able to buy storage for, for obviously, the ISR data, mm -hmm. because it comes really quickly, and we want to process it and, and get rid of it, and not pay for it continuously. We're also looking at when we outs we're going to be able to try to outsource our actual uh, data centers at the bases. And outsourcing in a two terms, two models. We're trying one right now, which is government-owned com uh, uh, consumer operated or commercial operated, whereby uh, they're going to run the data center and we're going to give them some equipment. We're also looking at the COCO model, totally uh, commercial, right. totally, it's because we want to be able to get out of the business. <laughs> And so we're getting to the point now where we're actually starting to have managed services for lots of the activities that we're actually doing and trying to get further down that path of managed service. Yeah, that COCO issue comes up periodically because, you know, you hear the argument, if you look at a government agency's mission statement, show me on there where you find run data centers. Um, you know, so, it, it's not there. you know, <laughs> you know it, it's to focus on the mission and then have the, the contractors that are going to, you know, and I, I know the need for security and privacy and the need for, you know, good sound business governance in place, but still it's an interesting question. Uh, Zach uh, Goldstein, how about over NOAA? How does, uh, you, you started to talk a little bit about mm -hmm. your private cloud being not necessarily just NOAA, but only you are the only tenant, that kind of thing. And how do you factor the, uh, the cloud strategy in with um, uh, the data center consolidation strategy? So our cloud strategy is documented in our data center consolidation so strategy. It's, it's like, like, it's, uh, it's, like it's, Tony it's, said, it's sort of just a part of the overall program. Right. Um, in fact, I almost think of data center consolidation as a subset of, of the cloud as, mm -hmm. as opposed to the other way around. Because Data center consolidation is about place. Where does something go? Right. And and it, it, with the exception of um, high performance computing, which we don't virtualize because that doesn't make sense technically, um, 
with the exception of that, uh, everything we have is either, um, if, if you imagine that you can move it to virtualization and it's accessible over the network, then if it's uh, dedicated to you, it's a private cloud. If it's, if it's not, it's a community cloud. And if it's everybody, I mean, if it's just your, your, your best friends, it's a community cloud. And if it's everybody, then it's a public cloud. Right. Um, and, and so what you have is a spectrum. And the spectrum is, um, it, it isn't so much a, a variability, in, in my view, on um, contractor or not. Because uh, even when you operate it yourself, uh, odds are you're heavily reliant upon contractors that are perhaps sitting next to you. What is is it's, it's a matter of how much control you have and, uh, and how much confidence you have that what you want is going to be done for you. So um, we've been experimenting with, uh, we've been implementing uh, mechanisms all across that spectrum. Uh, a couple of days ago, I think it was a couple of days ago, um, uh, we... Um, we implement. We awarded a contract uh, for uh, soft, excuse me, a platform as a service and uh, infrastructure as a service mm -hmm. that will be used government. Uh, excuse me, uh, NOAA wide um, by the weather service, the satellite service, the ocean service, and so on. And um, uh, we'll be going through a single service delivery function so that we can, as as things move to the cloud, we'll identify opportunities for consolidation of right. administration. Um, that's one thing. Early on, though, we were uh, very early movers in software as a service, mm -hmm. and that just gets the gets the application out of your space completely. Um, it's it requires a lot of coordination, but we want to use all the tools available. I think we just ought to go with everything as a service. I mean, I mean that's where we're heading with uh, with all this stuff in IT. I mean, um, it's going to get to the point where we're going to try to think of what it, what can't I do as a service. Uh, Scott Gray, what do you think uh, on uh, cloud? and manage service as it relates to data center consolidation. Well, I, I think Zach made a number of very important points. I want, I want to call out two of them because I think that they're critical as far as how we march forward. One is cloud computing and managed services go hand in hand in concert with data center consolidation. You got to think about both of those in concert in terms of where are you going in the future? How are you modernizing your infrastructure? What opportunities are you going to seize it, when you move to this other data center op operating model in terms of migrating your applications, going to the cloud, et cetera. So in, in the other point I'd like to, like to bring out is you know, it was talked about in terms of place. Where, where does it reside? But if we extend that concept a little bit, you know, what we're seeing is more and more location, physical locations becoming a factor. Mm -hmm. If we look at the, the needs of the agencies, and they're growing over time in terms of data, the driving factor in our industry is the flow of data and, and that volume. So what we're seeing is more and more organizations, both federal and commercial, are trying to locate their data centers as close as possible to major uh, backbone connections. Sure, for the uh, so if you think about it, you know, the needs of the future are going to demand a super fast highway for data. Mm -hmm. And the, the proximity of your on-ramps to that, that highway and your off-ramps matters. Location matters. Right. So I think what we're going to see is this model of essentially taking your enterprise to the network is going to be a huge enabler in terms of cloud and managed services. Mm -hmm. Very good point about moving to where the connectivity is. I used to, uh, since I take credit for inventing modern day wireless, I wish that when I was much younger, I would have went out and bought the highest hill in every city, you know, had to have a tower on there. And I would be sitting nice right now. I want to hear from Carl and Chris on the same issue, but um, before we do that, we're going to take a short break. You're listening to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Radio 1500 AM. Welcome back to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Radio 1500 AM. I'm Jim Fleisick here with Zach Goldstein from NOAA, Frank Konechny from U.S. Air Force, Tom Tony McMahon from IRS, Chris Steele from Software AG Government Solutions, Scott Gray from Lockheed Martin, and Carl Schwab, Schwab from NetScout. And we're talking data center consolidation. When we went to break, we had heard from all but except two of our uh, industry panels. I'd like to hear um, let's start with Chris. Chris uh, Steele at Software AG. How do you, you know, look at when you're supporting your customers, data center consolidation, mm -hmm. cloud, managed services, they all start to get somewhat, in my mind anyway, a little bit confused as to, you know, how do we put it all together? How, how do you address that? Well, I think you're absolutely right, Jim. I think they, you know, all those concepts do bleed together and we're really pushing towards those. So if you look at the underlying concepts of, of cloud computing, like 
elastic compute capability, shared storage, things like that, all things that help us be more efficient, uh, more elastic, and cost efficient in terms of paying only for what you're using. Um, the same can be said about managed services, and really when we're seeing agencies move to consolidated efforts, that's what they're doing. They're really right. thinking about reducing redundancy, consolidating, um, virtualization is, a, is another underlying sure. concept, right? So being able to, to virtualize and only use what you need and be able to ramp up resources as you need them, ramp them back down. All the uh, all those concepts are pretty much the same across these uh, different paradigms. Mm -hmm. It really boils down to, um, as uh, I think it was Tony that said, uh, data security. So can I put my data out in a public cloud? Can I put it in a private cloud? Do I need to maintain it on premise? Um, how do I can you know uh, control mm -hmm. the the security around that data, and that really drives a lot of where the agencies are going. Sure, sure. Call Shab. What are uh, kinds of ways you see this ho o overall strategy of data centers, cloud managed service? Um, how do you kind of view them as you're helping your customers move forward? Well, I guess the first I'd say Netscout supports all three natively. So it, it all comes down to developing a monitoring fabric. So as they roll out to the, the cloud, if they roll out to a managed service or a physical data center, we're still there. We're still able to monitor the different tiers of an application and, and report back. And, and as uh, uh, Chris was mentioning, all that rolls into uh, uh, cybersecurity, of course, right, with multi-segmentation and everything else going on sure. in the network and be able to bring the groups together under a common um, – uh, format. In other words, a, 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 a you know at the at the very base of the product of the product offering is, is packets, and everybody understands packets. It flows across cybersecurity. You know, uh, application people understand how data flows. They understand packets. So bring it all together into one, you know, authoritative data source, right? That everybody can reference and get around. It, it helps the teams collaborate and make, right. makes the offering better. Yeah, excellent. I mean, cybersecurity, we can do shows and shows and shows on that subject right now. Yes, sir, Scott, you had a comment on that? So, you, Jim, you brought up a good point earlier about culture. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, as we're working across the enterprise quite often, and I think it's very easy to think about data cent center consolidation and other transformations as an IT initiative mm -hmm. or solely as a cost reduction initiative, where you know organizations are moving to is data is is their greatest asset and they need to start to think about organizational behavior organizational design those sorts of things because the consolidation to the data center really is an organizational culture shift yeah. and so embracing that likely you know you'll see bigger benefits in terms of business process service to citizens etc yeah you're right i mean uh, i wasn't kidding before like all 126 shows we have done that topic has come up. It usually comes up in the in the constraints or challenges section, you know, that you need to, the technology is the easy part. It's the culture that's the tough part, but excellent uh, throwing that out there. Uh, Frankie, what kinds of uh, benefits are you seeing at Air Force coming out of these efforts? Um, I guess the obvious one would be you're saving some money. Saving but some money. Is there anything you could add to that that you think yeah, are so significant? Well, I mean, for us, is we're actually identifying the applications now and quantifying the applications and where they are. This is a big deal because... Uh, so you know what you have. We know what we have, finally. <laughs> At least we're getting to know what we have, finally. The, uh, and we know now what we have has been, uh, you know, special modifications have done for some of the applications based upon mission needs. And so we're knowing that also. So we're enlarging that scope as to what could be done across all the missions. We're also knowing that we consolidate the, the applications and try to rationalize them. Mm -hmm because we can find some duplicative information there as well. And we are not also figuring out what the authoritative data sources are now at the same time, because a lot of times when projects start, they use whatever data sources are available to them, right. and they may not be authoritative. So as we go across the board, we're understanding better the domains of what applications are out there that's supporting the mission, where they should be setting to actually support the mission that's essential, especially at the base, sure. and what can be moved now to a consolidated core data center. It, be it either a DUD one or a commercial one. And, I, and obviously, if we do it a commercial one and a DUD one, even we're getting better return on uh, patching and operations because we're using SLAs now yeah. instead of using organic labor. And it becomes easier for us now to look at it from a, you know, we want to, of course, put the airmen out to doing mission. Right. right. And this is helping us actually do that because the constrained force structure that we have right now, 
we can't have airmen doing IT work, really, if it's not necessary for the mission. Sure. Well said. Good point. Uh, Zach, what kind of benefits are you seeing other than the obvious, the money savings? Which is a big one, I know, but are there right. some other things you're seeing coming out of this that you think are surprising or expected benefits? Saving money is, is important, and it's the most obvious one. Mm -hmm. uh, and, there's a lot, and we've already discussed a lot of ways um, that that occurs. It, it saves time, um, and except for the trite comment about time is money. Right. <laughs> this is really different, right? Um, if, if, if you've only got a few things to, to focus on, to manage, do you really want to be spending your time managing infrastructure that somebody else can take care of you and take care of for you, yeah, and instead point. you can focus on on um, where do you want to take your applications? Where do you want, even if you stay within the IT realm and, and mm -hmm. don't say we're turning it into research or other kinds of, of mission dollars, um, staying with the, the people who do uh, information management, do you want those people worrying about um, that server underneath somebody's desk or uh, even the data center that they're integrally involved in managing, or do you want to be able to pay for somebody else to do that, um, have some of your folks managing that effort, you can't leave it unmanaged, but it frees up time to worry about other things, yeah. to, to, to advance other things. Um, and, and then uh, I, I guess there's also, this sort of gets into the, the economics as well, but there's a, economies of scale. Yeah. When you start consolidating, all of a sudden things that you couldn't afford become affordable that are important to do. So if you have five data centers in each one, or five locations in each one didn't have a, a adequate backup, you can c consolidate them into two where, where one is fully redundant of the other, and now you've improved your resiliency. Sure. So you save time, you can improve your resiliency, um, and, uh, and it does give you visibility along the way to, to manage Excellent. a lot of other improvements. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Tony McMahon, what kind of benefits you're seeing uh, with, uh, as you worked your way now and made these milestones? What, what expectations do you have for uh, benefits coming out of the efforts? Okay. Uh, so, you know, outside of costs, uh, saving money, uh, one of the things that we've really been focusing on is high availability and security. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you think about that, uh, we have a lot of customers. And as we say now, uh, they looked at our mission statement. We do more than taxes. You know, the Affordable Care Act is an example, but we do more than taxes, so we support a lot. And people want the systems available all the time. So building that redundancy and resiliency in is one thing. Uh, we now, uh, when we implement major applications, uh, we have, uh, you know, it's always about disaster. It used to be about disaster recovery. Can you recover at another site? Now it's about alternate site processing. Uh, we have to shut down our centers a couple of times a year because of maintenance and everything. So now, rather than bringing those systems down, uh, we actually just move them from one site to the other. Mm -hmm. uh, that keeps them up uh, because the, uh, we interface with the states for, for our Affordable Care Act. We, of course, the tax practitioners always want the systems available. They, they never sleep, so we, we can't sleep. Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> one of the other things we've seen is... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, because of this redundancy and resiliency that we've built into, into our infrastructure, uh, we're down to two data centers now, and they, you know, we've built that infrastructure. We had an ice storm at one and a snowstorm at the other, and there was no hiccup. Nobody closed. You know, IRS never closes. We never, nobody saw a difference. Uh, we kept everything up Excellent. and running because people can work from anywhere. They can access right. the systems uh, covering 24 sure. By seven across the country, we got people in California supporting systems on the East Coast, so we cover everything. That's been another big benny. Yeah, I bet so. That good point, uh, Carl Schaub. What do you see as some of the benefits you're seeing your customers achieving as they move to data center consolidations? Well, picking up on what Frank was talking about earlier, I think I, I would sum it up as essential management. And then one of the other ones that I think is kind of interesting to me is the the fact that you're actually getting um, accurate documentation. I mean, it, it goes it goes without saying that, you know, if you go back, you know, five, ten years um, and you looked at any given service in the federal government or any given uh, application, most likely you would have to pull five or ten different groups together to figure out how a service was tied together, That's how it was right. hosted. And, and now you're actually getting that and it's documented, it's well, you know, well established for all the hosted apps. Yeah. Excellent point. Uh, Chris Steele, any benefits you can add to the discussion? That, uh yeah, I think we've covered a lot of them, mm -hmm. and um, I think uh, going back to your point earlier, just about um, 
connecting really the the mission, the agency mission, down to what do we have running on the hardware. I think that's uh, we're starting to see a lot more progress, and that ties in um, with the visibility and and having having the capability to consolidate not just the documentation uh, of the systems themselves and the applications, but really how they tie up into that the mission priorities. Mm -hmm. So um, couldn't agree with you more that, you know, agencies across the board, their mission is an IT. They want to get out of it. In certain cases, they're doing that, and they're moving to cloud computing and managed services. In a lot of other cases, uh, like we were saying with cybersecurity, they can't. You know, that data is too sensitive. They need to own it. They need to manage it. Um, but a lot of the benefits that we're seeing coming out of this is they're getting a lot more efficient at managing that data. They're adopting a lot of these best practices from cloud computing, doing uh, the elastic uh, compute, the shared services, the in-memory uh, computing, um, all of those things, they're bringing those things to bear. And what we're seeing is we're seeing um, less people doing a lot more. Yeah, you know, actually, they're very good points. I think it's it's almost like a clean slate in a way where, you know, like uh, Frank mentioning, you take your inventory, find out things, you can really think our mission. What is our mission? And what, uh, what all these things over the years, how many of them really aren't that important anymore? How, which ones are important? Let's really focus on getting the things that really need to be done, um, you know, closer to the place and, and to, the, to the end user and so forth. Uh, Scott Gray, what do you think? Any benefits? You, it's always dangerous going last when you talk benefits because everybody <laughs> knocks off a bunch. But is there any other thoughts come to your head that you can add to the discussion here about benefits you're seeing? Sure. Uh, you know, I touched on it a little bit earlier that, you know, it, it, it again, I think needs to be seen as an organizational effort. Um, you know, more and more, like I said, the, you know, your data center, your IT infrastructure is the, the backbone of how you get things done now. Yeah, we need only to think about the last time the power went out in a given building and what happened to your mission, right? So same thing with the data center. And those of us that have experienced, you know, a data center shutdown or a hard shutdown, I mean, that, that is stinging in our mind about what that meant at that point in time uh, and how critical it has become to the operation. So, you know, Planning, execution, tracking progress, all those things critically important to get the benefits that you're, you're, you're trying to get out of, out of this, this move to consolidation. Yeah. yeah, you're right about that. I mean, it's a worst nightmare when you, you hear the, uh, well, the airlines can't fly today because there's an outage in the data center. You know, you, you, you know people are panicking and people get real nervous about that one. Um, Let's talk about uh, lessons learned and, and major challenges. I think we can talk about those two subjects sort of together a little bit. Um, uh, Tony McMahon, what are some of the ma uh, lessons you learned through the process and what are some of the challenges you would pass on to colleagues maybe that are working these same issues? Well, Jim, as you know, uh, by being at Treasury, when you uh, come in the IRS culture, it's been mentioned. Absolutely. is getting people to see the benefits of this. So uh, technology has not been an issue for us. Uh, you know, we make things work. Uh, we've actually, uh, you know, this re-hosting, re I mean, the technology is there. It's the people piece that we've, uh, uh, and our customers, they always, when we say we're going to move something, they, where is it going? They don't, a lot of times, they don't even know where it's at anyway. Right. <laughs> but they want to know where it's going. That's right. You know, That's not the way we did it before. Yeah, my server used to sit under my desk and all this. So, you know, as long as you can get to it, that's, so it's that culture. Uh, and then uh, availability. Right. Uh, it's, it's negotiating with our customers to say we need two hours just to do this. Is, I mean, it's a struggle <coughs> so, because we have people everywhere. So it's that cultural <coughs> shift. Mm -hmm. uh, for people now, but now that it's there and they see it, it's always there, it's available, that, uh, that ability to access from anywhere. I think it's, it's, it's turning the ship. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, as I mentioned, when we uh, shut down Detroit, that was not an easy task, but now people, well, okay, I'm, my job has not changed. I'm still doing the same thing I was doing every day. Yeah, there you go. And actually telework kind of changed that too because a lot of people weren't in the office anyway. Right. So. Yeah, I bet. the. Um, yeah, I got to look this up. I used the quote before and I think it was Robert Kennedy who said one third of everyone's against everything all the time, no matter what it is. I mean, you know, you know they're just, just by nature, they're going to be against uh, a, a proposal. 
Um, Frank, what do you think uh, on terms of uh, looking at uh, lessons learned and uh, challenges ahead? Well, you know, since we're doing the application rationalization, you have to have some basis for doing this. And that's always been an issue because everybody believes their application is absolutely essential to whatever they're doing. Oh, yeah. And so you have to go back to, we went back to enterprise architecture, you know, responsibilities and roles and, and uh, main core function areas to look at what applications were duplicative or could be consolidated or were not essential for the mission. And that was one of the areas where we had a big lesson learned. The other, the other one was when we did the engineering analysis to know where to put the application. You just can't say I'm going to move it to a commercial cloud when it has, you know, 200 external interfaces that are sitting someplace else. Mm -hmm. And so we had to do a lot of work in the engineering analysis to figure out what is the best location for a particular application. Just can't say I'm going to migrate it tomorrow without understanding all this interconnectivity as well as the user environment. The, uh, we talked about cyber already, cyber defense. We're finding now that as uh, we move to a commercial cloud, and even within our own organization, that we have to establish another cyber defense CND for mission mm -hmm. for the entire data center to sure. support that, which we really haven't talked about before. Because the, the uh, application owners kind of did this before with the patching and making sure everything was correct. But now we're pushing everything into a data center in a virtualized environment. So if you're going to patch, you're going to patch the platform across all of the applications now to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And that will cause perturbation sometimes because some of the applications are dependent upon code that is in a particular platform area. So we have to be very careful now as we go towards a consolidated data center viewpoint as to how we want to actually operate it and manage it and then get the kind of construct. Because, you know, we're, since we're going to, you know, roughly 128 data centers across, across the uh, Air Force plus uh, DOD core data centers as well as commercial, when we say patch in a particular right. platform, we want to patch it across all of the environments yeah, and look at the impacts. And it's very difficult to understand that impact unless right. you can, but it will. It's difficult to understand it, but the cloud is actually going to help us do that right. because we actually can put an instance off and test it in that cloud environment to yeah. see if it will actually work or not. Yeah, Very good. Well put. Good ideas there. Uh, Zach, some uh, lessons learned, some challenges remaining. So um, analysis will get you so far. And um, you've got to get the analysis right, otherwise you'll break things. So uh, without trivializing it, that, that's a major challenge we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. We need to do that. Um, but it will only get you so far. If the culture is such that um, people own their mission, and, and especially uh, if, if it's a life-saving mission or a, a federal regulatory mission, uh, you've got to convince them that their mission will be safe when you move it. And that gets tough if the data you have doesn't clearly show the cost savings. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we've learned is that it's really easy to consolidate data centers when you have new money. So our major consolidations have been we're, we're, we're building a, a brand new data center in, uh, in Hawaii. Right. Well, okay, so uh, you don't get to uh, bring your, your stuff to be individual. You've got to go all fit in that one room in the new location because right. it's a new facility. Same thing in College Park. It's a lot harder when uh, there's no new money and yet you know there's an opportunity there. So you got, actually have to make the economics work, right. show people that um, – that they can save money and that their mission will still be protected. And that requires uh, strong leadership at the top. And I'm fortunate to have that. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, it's the challenge is you, you keep it up and you, you just, just keep grinding it down. Mm -hmm. um, there's some other things as well. That, that, that's a big one. Um, one of the challenges is if you want people to, to move to a, a better place, you have to have the instrumentation to show that it's a better place, and actually showing energy efficiencies can be costly in itself. So, you know, the catch yeah. 21. Um, uh, security is a challenge when you're going to the cloud. You've had entire programs sure. about that because you lose visibility. So, Absolutely. the lesson learned is you Absolutely. have to get the visibility. Um, the uh, I'll, I'll let other people talk yeah, about it. Yeah, uh, we like to pick up, too, with our private sector guest also. But first, we have to take another break. Uh, you're listening to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM. Welcome back to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM. I'm Jim Flyzik here with Zach Goldstein from NOAA, Frank Konechny from U.S. Air Force, Tony McMahon from IRS, Chris Steele from Software AG Government Solutions, Scott Gray from Lockheed Martin, and Carl Schaub from NetScout. We're talking data center consolidation. Uh, we were talk, uh, talking about 
challenges and we're talking about lessons learned. Scott Gray, what are you know, a couple of things you pop out to you about challenges and lessons learned in this area? Well, I'd, I'd like to touch again on, on something Zach said. Strong leadership is essential. That's a good and, point. And in every flavor in, in, in aspects. So if, if we think about politically, financially, technically, and also operating as a change agent, all those are essential in getting this done and getting it done successfully. You know, if you think about data center consolidation or any IT project, it's a team sport. It's best played with effective relationships up and down the chain. Uh, you know, as an executive, you got to keep your project sold, not only year over year, but literally now, you know, month to month. The other thing I would throw on the table is ed education is critical. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, you, when we talk about data center consolidation, those that don't operate in our IT world, literally think about you're, you're loading up a truck with hardware, driving it to a new location, unboxing it and plugging it into the wall. We know it's not that. It's far more complex. So we have a duty to reach out to all the stakeholders to have them understand what is the size, scope, and complexity of this effort. Right. Very well said. I like that leadership thing. Carl Schaub, what do you think are some of the lessons learned and uh, challenges out there yet? Yeah, I think I'll pick up on uh, Zach and, and Frank as well. The, both of them mentioned analysis prior to making changes. I think the, the one thing I've noticed over the last year is we've gotten really good at doing the analysis up front and trying to figure out how applications are tied together and, and where they should be deployed. Mm -hmm. But what we consistently still fail at is continually monitoring them and making sure where the user population is. Because what, what is happening is the user population is still moving. So what ends up happening, we've had a large customer that went, went through an email migration, and what, what's happening is they hone their users to a particular email uh, uh, pod, as mm -hmm. they, they like to call it. Right. And what ends up happening is the users move, and now they're still home. Say they're in San Diego now, but they're still going back to Oklahoma City to get their mail. So it, it's, it's not just analysis up to the time you do the deployment. You have to, it's continual analysis all the way through. Very good. Yeah. Another good point there. Uh, Chris Steele, what do you think? What's um, uh, lessons learned and some challenges that you're encountering as you help work some of these issues? Right. Uh, probably the biggest challenge is, as uh, Scott was mentioning, it, it's really leadership. And if you think about traditionally, leadership is really, IT has been siloed, and it had its own leadership, mm -hmm. and they made their own decisions. When you're thinking about a data center consolidation, you know, that's no longer possible. You need to bring in a, a wide variety of different stakeholders. You have to have leadership right up at the top level. There has to be um, ties with all the, the stakeholders across that mission. So it's finance, it's operations, it's architecture, all those people, because as you go through and triage which applications are going to be shut down, which ones are going to be uh, consolidated, where the redundancies are going to be removed, um, as we talked about before, there's, there's going to be a lot of infighting. So you, you need that very high-level executive leadership um, to, to be able to make those type of determinations and, again, building on what we've all said about visibility, having the visibility amongst all those different stakeholders. So it's not just knowing where my hardware is, where my applications are, but it's also knowing, you know, where that business functionality is and, and where we want to go in the future. Yeah, that really was an interesting twist there. We moved to leadership and collaboration and support, and uh, I think, Scott, you led us that direction and said was some very good points there, I think, that, uh, that came out. Which means I come right back to you, Scott. Uh, we're going to shift now over and start talking about uh, where this is all going in the future. Uh, we like to end all our shows with our panelists giving us some idea of their vision of the future here. And we've got about 12 minutes left, so I'm going to ask each of you to take about a minute and a half or so and tell us where this is all going. What do you see? Uh, what kind of improvements will we see in government down the road because of these efforts going on today? Scott, what do you think? What's your crystal ball look like? I, I think it's clear that budgets will remain challenged. So... You know, if the savings trend continues from these sorts of efforts, I think you could probably see a 10 to 20 percent sort of cost reduction off of the, call it $80 billion annual IT budget, mm -hmm. something on that order. Um, I think what we'll also see is the things we talk about in terms of paying power, pipe, compute, more commodity IT. We're going to see those continue to consolidate at the parent agency level and more so across government where there's more sharing of assets. Uh, but one thing I, I think we shouldn't lose sight of is when we think about, you know, the citizens and how we're providing services to them, what we're going to see is an ever-growing digital relationship between government and citizens. Mm -hmm. 
That's excellent, excellent point. Uh, Tony McMahon, where's this all going for you? Tony, you've been working these issues for quite some time, so how do you see them all evolving down the road, and what, what will the world look like that's different because of all these efforts? Uh, we actually have a data center strategy vision, uh, and we're moving towards that, and part of it is two physical data centers, which we, we've reached because we shut down Detroit, and the cloud as part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, what can we move to the cloud as part of, and now that we've uh, reduced our footprint considerably, how do we lay that out? So we have a, a project called the World Class Data Center where we are looking at hot and cold aisles, how do we lay that out efficiently, uh, standard racks, wiring from the top, the redundancy, power, and all that. Uh, we've carved out space in our data centers to start this, and we've actually built it out in uh, one of our other locations too to lay them out. The other piece is, of course, people. They can work from anywhere. It doesn't matter. So yeah. then it, it, it becomes, we don't care where it's at. We can move applications up from place to place, keeping them up and available. And then the last piece, uh, uh, Jim, you mentioned, you say everything should be a service. So we're actually looking at data center as a service. Okay. Uh, where uh, we already house in a lot of treasuries equipment. Uh, we've had some other agencies already approach us about housing because we have level five facilities uh, housing their equipment as well. And then we're looking at levels. You know, do you just want us to put it in our building or do you want us to run it? So that's data center as a service. So we're looking at yeah. what's the agreement, you know, what's the right. what's the cost associated yeah. with this, yeah. and that's that's a, a big huge piece. Excellent. I mm -hmm. mean, it, it's a logical follow-on. You know, you consolidate within your agency, then you begin looking across agency. Where are there commonalities? Where other agencies can start sharing with each other? Carl Schaub, what do you think? Uh, what's what's it look like to you down the road, Carl? Well, I'll take a technology spin on it. I think uh, more re uh, reliance on automation and virtualization to where you're virtualizing the actual network platform and not just the apps and the services. Mm -hmm. I think you'll probably have um, a lot more reliance on multi-segmentation because you're going to bring the groups. I mean, still today, you still kind of have application people. You still have network people. You still have uh, storage people. I think, and now cybersecurity, I think with multi-segmentation, what you're going to end up getting is a, a single group with uh, all them expertise kind of bumped together, right? Which that also gives you cost savings because you have less people, less groups, right, to maintain. So. Excellent. Well said. Uh, Chris Neal, what do you think? What's it look like? Where's it all going down the road? Just building on what these guys are saying. Everything's going to be a shared service. All of the uh, resources are going to be shared, scalable, on demand. We're going to be able to... Uh, go out and basically shop around, and a lot of that shopping is going to be automated. Um, if you think about where we are with uh, data.gov, uh, making all the different uh, data across the different agencies available, providing APIs to it, so that we start to just aggregate our services and we don't actually have developers that are sitting down and trying to build something from scratch. They're really just going out and, and aggregating across all the different data sources that are already out there. Yeah, reusing those objects and tools and things that are already there and just more like a jigsaw puzzle. Let's take the existing pieces and just make them work together as opposed to building new pieces. Um, Frank, what do you think? Uh, what's it look like as you look out into the future as a result of all these efforts? Why will the Air Force look different? Uh, what are some of the things you're going to see or we should look forward to uh, down the road? We, we want data center as a service. Mm -hmm. Totally. That's somebody will drop a pod on our Air Force base and run it at a level three data center using the most modern equipment, the most modern tool set they can, and keep up the SLAs. Because as I said, we want airmen to do airmen work. We don't want them to do IT work. We also want to be able to uh, auto-provision to any particular data center we want to, be it a core data center or commercial data center, and move them based upon you know efficiencies as well as mission. And we, we kind of touched on this a little bit. We want mobility. Mm -hmm. We're going to get into a mobile force pretty quickly now where everybody has phones, pads, you name it, and we have to have connectivity across the board. So we have to have it in such a way that we have connectivity, but you can't just put an application in one data center. We're going to get to the point where we're going to have them in multiple data centers linked with data that's going to be common across them. Because when I have a person in PAC coming into the United States, they cannot actually go back to PAC to actually get their data. Yeah. yeah. The, um, I don't think it's a sensitive question, but I, the coordination with DISA as you're looking at these programs, I would assume there's uh, connections going on yeah, there. Yeah, DISA's doing the core data centers for DOD. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at, because it's on the optical core as well, and we have the same, same thing. I mean, we have to move data across on the optical core. 
But uh, yeah, the, for coop sites and for everything else, we have redundancy. Yeah. Same with the commercial side. We have to have redundancy between commercial sites too, if we have to. Sure, sure. Excellent point, excellent point. Zach Goldstein, where's this going? What's the future look like? I'd like to think about the future in, two, in terms of the outcomes. Okay. The outcomes from the technology and the outcomes in, in terms of the people. For the technology, our vision is that we'll have data centers, um, cloud services, they're able to adapt to the demands of our changing mission, um, to leverage technologies as they evolve so we keep up. And as a consequence, uh, we'll be able to continually reduce uh, cost and, and increase savings and reduce the environmental impact because data centers have a big environmental footprint. In terms of the people and the mission, uh, it's important that our customers be free to focus on mission applications. Mm -hmm. that's, that's where the, the rubber meets the road in terms of being able to give that extra two minutes of tornado warning or the, the more accurate cone of uncertainty for a hurricane track. Um, we, as CIOs and technologists, we need to care about where stuff is. We need to care about where the data is because we have to worry about security. We have to worry about who we're holding accountable. Uh, we need to worry about network access. We've got a 10 gig nationwide uh, network to connect our largest data centers. But the um, way I like to think about it is that the computers and, and the, the data, they don't care where their users and their developers are. Right. Our vision is that the reverse would also be true. Mm -hmm. Very well, very well set, very well put. Let me try to do some um, summarizing like I always do. I take notes as we go through. As you guys say something that you know, creates uh, a thought in my head, I jot them down. Let's see how well I can uh, try to put together some, um, some reporting here. Uh, when we talked about examples, I heard about some tremendous progress being made. Every, every panelist talked about progress and feels very good that uh, we've come a long, long way. Obvious uh, things are we're saving money. There's some tremendous savings. I think Scott quoted some numbers and some others did too. Uh, we heard about storage as a service at the IRS and, uh, and what that means where you're only actually using and paying for what you're actually using. And I think that kind of a concept uh, will continue to evolve over time. Uh, we, we talked about how cloud and managed services uh, fit in, and they really are uh, included within the strategy. Either you can say data center consolidations within the cloud strategy or the cloud strategies within the data center consolidations. But essentially, they're, they're not mutually exclusive. They're now merging together and becoming one uh, way to go. And we talked about platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, where I then said, uh, it looks to me like everything as a service. And of course, we finally found our way to data center as a service here in this, uh, this last segment. Uh, benefits, uh, we have the obvious one being money, but the other ones that came across uh, too that I think were important were the inventory of applications, knowing what we have for the perhaps the first time, being able to do away with redundant stuff that perhaps we don't need. I like that idea of time savings. Um, as you begin to consolidate, simplify, you're actually creating more time to focus on things that need to be done. And that led to some of the economies of scale issues that, ca that were brought out that, um, you know, in some cases, perhaps an agency can support some of the other subcomponents that wouldn't have the wherewithal or budget or funds to actually be able to get something done. But when being done in a consolidated world, it leverages those costs across smaller uh, groups so that people can afford this stuff. Uh, high availability and security came out as another area that um, benefit that emerged from the conversations. And just the idea of having better information by, by rationalizing those applications. When we talked about lessons learned, um, people pieces jumped right in there. And the culture issue, I think, uh, just came out uh, right away. It's a culture shift. You're asking people to do different things. It's not going to be the way we used to do things in the past, and that in and of itself becomes a challenge. Uh, change control came up, too, that as you're making these changes, all these pieces have to be tested and worked together. It's very easy to start putting these pieces together and, and come up with some surprises that you don't want to hit. Um, we heard about get the uh, analysis right, and I heard a whole lot about leadership 
and the education and collaboration. This isn't about one person or one IT person that's going to take a lead here. This is gonna be leadership at the top with collaboration across the entire agency in order to get to where you're going to go uh, in a way that's going to benefit everyone. When we talked about vision, we talked about digital services. Uh, I thought it was a very interesting uh, comment. We talked about mobility, people working anywhere. Uh, the data center as a service concept uh, is something people are looking at for the future. And the people mission focus. What came across to me too when you were talking about better prediction of weather, when you're talking about the war fighter, when you're talking about the uh, IRS thing, we're really talking about saving lives here, aren't we? We're really talking about, the, in, the, in the case of IRS, making life simpler for people. When we're talking about the Air Force, we're talking about uh, being able to defend the country. So, I mean, when you take it to that aspect, it's a lot more to it than just technology. It's, it's all about the, the real issues of, of saving lives. With that, I need to thank our panelists for uh, taking time from their busy, busy schedule to share your knowledge with all of us. I need to thank our sponsors, without which uh, we would not have a show. Uh, of course, thanking the, uh, the good folks here at Federal News Radio, who uh, oft, uh, accommodate us so well. And of course, um, our most important people are that listening audience that's out there in the public that tunes in and listens to the show and listens to us. You've been listening to the Federal Executive Forum on Federal News Radio, 1500 AM.